good morning students today we are going to start with the new chapter that is p block elements now last year we did group 13 group 14 so this time we are going to do the groups from group 15 to 18 so before starting you should know what do you mean by p block elements so the elements which are belonging to group 13 to 18 they are called as p block elements now why they are called as p block elements because the last electron enters in which subshell that is p subshell and they have general electronic configuration that is ns2 np1 to 6 s and p block elements together they are called as representative element today we are going to start with the group 15 elements group 15 is called as a nitrogen family now what are the members of this family they are nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth so if we you take nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth what is there the first two they are non metals third and fourth they are semi metals or you can say metalloids and bismuth is metallic in nature so it is a metal now they have general electronic configuration ns2 np3 for example in case of nitrogen what is there atomic number is 7 it has configuration 1 is 2 2 is 2 and 2p 3 so it has three electrons in p subshell and they have a field configuration now before doing their physical properties we should know where do they occur so you know nitrogen is present in the atmosphere that is 78% of of atmosphere is formed of n2 now nitrogen is also present in the form of ammonia then ammonium compounds and fertilizers like urea phosphate fertilizers they also contain nitrogen now phosphorus is the 10th abundant element in the earth crust it is present in bones teeth muscles brain nervous tissues it is also present in the form of phospholipids and it is present in milk eggs fish and beans and many elements they are present as sulfides in the earth crust so next thing is their physical properties and first property that is the atomic and ionic radii so as we know that nitrogen phosphorus mostly they are non metals so they are forming covalent compounds and covalent and ionic radii increases down the group. they increases down the group from nitrogen to phosphorus there is increase in radii whereas there is small increase from arsenic to bismuth so why is it so because when we we are moving from nitrogen to phosphorus there is effective shielding by s and p electrons present in penultimate shell whereas when we are moving from arsenic to bismuth there is presence of completely filled d and f orbitals which have poor shielding effect as they are having poor shielding effect as a result atomic radii that will increase now next property is the ionization energy now ionization energy it goes on decreasing down the group due to increase in atomic size now group 15 elements have higher ionization energy as compared to group 14 due to smaller size that is obvious when we are moving from left to right sizes decreases atomic size decreases and ionization energy increases but when we are moving from group 15 to group 16 so out of these two group 15 have elements have higher ionization energy as compared to group 16 elements why is it so because they have stable half filled configuration that is p3 configuration the next is a allotropy so what do you mean by allotropy that is a property by which an element exists in more than one physical form now group 15 element uh, group 15 elements except nitrogen nitrogen doesn't show allotropy rest members that is phosphorus arsenic antimony they are showing allotropy for example we are having white phosphorus red phosphorus black phosphorus scarlet and violet now next 
property is catenation. So what do you mean by catenation? That is self-linking property. Self-linking property of an element. Now nitrogen shows catenation to some extent only. Why? Because it is existing in which form? That is N. In which it is forming triple bond with the nitrogen. So why it can form triple bond? Because of its small size, there is effective overlap between the p orbitals, sideways overlapping, that is p pi, p pi orbital overlap is effective due to their small size. So they show catenation to small extent. But phosphorus and other members, they can't form triple bond or multiple bonds. Rather, they are forming single bonds. So they show property of catenation to maximum extent. That is, they can exist in P4, AS4 form. So next property which we have to do, that is the oxidation state. Now the elements of this group, they show oxidation state of plus 3, plus 5 and minus 3. Now tendency to show minus 3 oxidation state decreases down the group. So nitrogen and phosphorus, they are showing what? That is the oxidation state of minus 3. Why is it so? Because their size is small and electronegativity is more. So they have small size and more electronegativity. Whereas other members being larger in size do not show minus 3 oxidation state. They show plus 5 oxidation state. But as we move down the group, the stability of plus 5 oxidation state decreases. Rather, the element at the bottom that is bismuth they it shows plus 3 oxidation state so why is it so it is due to inert pair effect so what is inert pair effect this is the reluctance of s electron to participate in bonding so now ns electron do not participate in bonding only np3 electrons will participate in bonding so that's why it will show which oxidation state that is plus 3 oxidation state now nitrogen shows oxidation state from minus 3 to plus 5 then nitrogen and phosphorus undergo oxidation as well as reduction in acidic medium. So this process is called as what that is disproportionation. For example, in case of nitrogen that is nitrous acid HNO2, it will disproportionate itself to form nitric acid H2O and nitric oxide. Now in HNO2, oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 3 and it is changing to plus 5. So here it is getting oxidized and it is getting to reduce to plus 2 in case of nitric oxide. Now same way phosphorus also undergo disproportionation reaction. For example that is phosphorus acid. Here oxidation state of phosphorus is plus 3. It is changing into phosphoric acid where it is having plus 5 that it is undergoing oxidation. And it is also changing into phosphine that is pH3 where the oxidation state is minus 3 that it is undergoing reduction. So these two are the disproportionation reactions shown by nitrogen and phosphorus. Then next is the covalency. So how many bonds a given element is forming? So nitrogen can make maximum of 4 bonds so its covalence is 4. So it can make 3 bonds with p orbitals and it can lose also its Lone, uh, that is lone pair of electrons in S orbital also in total it can make 4 bonds so its covalence is 4 but phosphorus and higher members they can show the covalence of 5 also why is it so due to the presence of D orbitals they can utilize that D orbital by excitation of electron from S orbital to P and they can form compounds such as PCL5 now next is the reactivity towards hydrogen so these group elements they form trihydrides having formula MH3 where M is the elements of this group that is nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and this for example the structure of uh, ammonia that is the NH3 so it is sp3 hybridized and there is one lone pair of electron. Now hybridization is sp3 the stability of hydrides decreases down the so these hydride stability decreases down the group. Why is it so? Due to decrease in the bond dissociation energy. So as we are moving from nitrogen to bismuth, size increases. So due to increase in size, bond length increases. So due to increase in bond length, 
dissociation energy required to break this bond will be less so as a result bismuth hydride is least stable thermally least stable then are the boiling points now boiling points they increase is down to group why is it so because the main interaction between these molecules that is the van der waal interaction and van der waal interaction depends upon size as the size increases van der waal interaction increases with the exception of ammonia because in case of ammonia there is formation of hydrogen bonding that's why it is having more boiling point as compared to ph3 and as h3 so the order of boiling point is bismuth hydride has maximum then antimony hydride then is the ammonia then arsenic hydride and ph3 has least boiling point so we consider both van der waal interactions and in case of ammonia we just consider hydrogen bond then is the bond angle this is also very important now bond angle decreases as we move down the wall so why is it so because when we are drawing the structure of this and if we are comparing the electronegativities of nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth so nitrogen is most electronegative out of them it has electronegativity of the range 3 so as a result what will be there the bond pairs will be closer towards the nitrogen as they will be closer towards the nitrogen there will be more repulsions between the bond pairs so as there will be more more repulsions so bond angle will be more or you can say electronegativity of nitrogen is highest lone pair will be towards nitrogen and most repulsions will be there between bond pairs and bond angle increases so as the electronegativity decreases repulsions decreases as the electrons are away from that atom the result repulsions will be minimal now next thing is there that is the basicity decreases so as we move from nitrogen to bismuth hydride basicity decreases so why is it so due to small size of nitrogen electron pair remains confined to the nitrogen so as a result they are concentrated on it so they are more available to the acid lewis acid so that's why it is more basic now the last property which is left that is the reducing power of hydrides now reducing power of hydride increases down the group due to decrease in bond dissociation energy down the group for example if you will see the case for ammonia then what is there if this bond is stronger so that depends upon sizes if the size is smaller the bond will be stronger bond dissociation energy will be more so this bond will not break down and reducing power will be less now as we know as we move down the group in case of bismuth hydride what is there size is larger as a result bond length will be more as bond length will be more it can be easily broken down and it can act as what that is strong reducing agent or it has more reducing power now do tell here next time we will do the next topic thank you